There was once this artist who would go out to the woods, and he would sit underneath the trees and create his art. He would write, he would draw. But the reason he went out there was because he heard that's where all of the other artists go. And sure enough, other artists would all be out there, sort of forming their own group, their own collective. They all went out there. They all sort of felt like a tribe, almost. And everybody knew that's where the artists all went, out to this same forest. All of these artists doing the same exact thing. But who was he to question it? Because that's what all of the so-called artists did. That's who society was calling an artist. That's They were calling themselves artists. Who was he to argue? So he's out there one day, underneath a tree, feeling the breeze wash past his face, sitting there, staring at a blank page, but still calling himself an artist. He's created nothing, he's done nothing. But you're out there with all of the other artists, right? You're all together, you're all in your little group, right? So you must also be an artist. Because the group said so. And we all know art, and the only thing about art that matters is that everyone agrees with it. And that everyone does the same thing. Because what is more artistic than doing the same thing that everyone else does? So this artist is sitting out there. And he hears, he hears this squawk coming from uh, far away. And it happens again, and it happens again, and it happens again. So he finally gets up. And he's looking across the field, through the tall grass, and the trees. And he can't really see anything because the sun is so bright in his eyes. So he starts to walk towards this sound. And he walks and he walks and finally in the distance he sees sort of, sort of this, this lump, this, this mass laying there and, and he takes off running towards it. And the squawk gets louder and louder and louder. And he finally comes upon what was making this horrendous noise. And it's a peacock. The male peacock. Laying in the grass. Bleeding profusely. Cut up, beaten up, torn up. And the artist kneels down and he says, who would do that to such a beautiful creature? Who would do that? Who would do this? What would do this? And the peacock looks at him and says, Son, I fulfilled my duty. I did what I was supposed to do. Sometimes, when you're doing what you're supposed to do, doesn't mean you're going to be safe. Doesn't mean you get to uh, finish it. But you do what you're supposed to do. What you know you have to do. What you want to do. What you're made to do. Doesn't mean it all works out perfectly. But the artist looks at this. Peacock and says, what are you, what are you talking about? What, you, you accomplished your goal? You accomplished your mission? What, is, what, what does that even mean? Like, why would something destroy this, this creature that most humans see as something purely aesthetic? They see the, they see the 
bright feathers all across the back of a peacock, right? And you just look in awe at this thing. And the peacock replies to the artist. He says, son, what do you know about peacocks? <laughs> what, do you, what do you know about peacocks? Do you, do you realize that the, the male peacock and the female peacock are extremely different? And for a reason. Do you know that, that the female peacock, she doesn't have all of these wonderful colors and these wonderful feathers. She's more muted in tone, more mellow overall. Not as what we would call attractive but she serves her purpose in taking care of the young. She can hide easier. She's not going to attract as much attention. But me, the peacock, I spread my feathers wide. I do a little jig, a little dance, out in the woods, out in the forest, because that's what I'm supposed to do. The peacock has all these wonderful feathers, these beautiful feathers that you see, he's telling the artist. So the reason why I have all of these feathers is to attract a mate. That's my purpose. And the artist says, well, I mean, isn't there another way? I mean, can't everything just be nice? You know, maybe if your feathers weren't so long, maybe if they were shorter, maybe if they weren't quite as loud, maybe if they didn't, you know, cause so much chaos, maybe if, if, you know, you just changed something. No, the peacock says, no, he says that son, that's not going to work. He says the female peacock is attracted to this plumage, to these feathers. He says, but one thing you may not know, as a lot of people see the peacock as this beautiful creature, especially the male peacock. But what they don't know, he says to the artist, he says, what you don't know and what they don't know about me is that all of this beauty that you see, all of these feathers, these make me a target. These feathers make me a target. The very thing that I'm put here to do, the very thing that I have that allows me to accomplish my task, to do the thing that I want to do, to attract my wife, to attract the peahen, to attract the others, to, to have offspring, to continue the species, the very thing that I have to do, that I want to do, that I feel deep in my soul that I have to do, the very same thing, these crown of thorns, crown of feathers. This thing that you see as beauty also makes me a target. It makes me a target to predators because they can see me easier because I'm out there. I spread my wings wide, wide and proud to do my little dance, to attract your mate and produce offspring. I could cower, I could hide, I could paint my feathers black so no one can see me. I could change my feathers, pluck out my feathers, but then I couldn't accomplish my goal, my task, the only goddamn reason why I'm here, son. <laughs> the thing I have to do requires me requires me to be a target. And the artist is dumbfounded. He doesn't know what to say. He says, how can you, knowing that you are a target, how can you continue? Huh. And the peacock just shakes his head says, I feel sorry for you. I really do. I feel sorry for you. And 
And the artist is angry now. He says, how dare you judge me? How dare you judge me? You're nothing but a pathetic peacock laying here dying because you spread your feathers instead of protecting yourself like maybe you should have. And again, the peacock just shakes his head and says, son, I feel sorry for you. I really do. You know, the peacock says, what, are, what were my options? To pluck all these feathers out of my back? To not arouse the interest of people around me? Pluck all these feathers off of my back? Paint myself mud gray? Mud brown? So I could sneak by predators and, and never be seen and hide and cower and be afraid and never produce the offspring? Never attract your mate. Never accomplish the only thing I was put here for, to continue my species. He said, son, I'm going to die either way. But at least this way, I did what I had to do. He says, sometimes the things that you see as beauty are also a burden. You can either live, fight, and die on your feet or live on your knees and die anyway. Then the peacock succumbs to his wounds <laughs> and he dies. The artist, still processing everything he's been told, digs a hole and gently lays the peacock down into his grave. But before he covers him up with dirt, he reaches down and gently removes two feathers from that glorious display. One feather he places at the head of the grave, and the other he folds between the pages of that empty note. your feathers, you roll in the mud, and you become just like everyone else. <laughs>